While the first images of his tailor-made navy suit and gold tie emerge, many tributes continue to be written for the ex-Yokozuna. Sumo reporter Nobuaki Tadaki reminds us in Sankei Sports that among all wrestlers he's met, Hakuho is the best sumo scholar he's encountered. And it speaks volumes for the enigma he is, Tadaki writes, that despite his vast knowledge of and respect for past Yokozuna and sumo traditions, he came to behave in ways which brought so much criticism. Remember, in the days of Asashoryu the heel, Hakuho was the face. Hakuho's later career behavior would appear a byproduct of his intense love-hate relationship with Japan. I will try to find a way to ask him about it one day. Nikan Sports, meanwhile, ran an interview with the man serving as his attendant on the day his 63-bout winning streak ended. His standard mineral water was Volvic, recalled the former Taketoba who, just as with former stablemate Ryuo, shares Hakuho's birthday. But for some reason, he continued, we had to get him a different brand that day. And in the superstitious sumo world, attendance can be haunted by that. I'm forever grateful for how he taught me to behave, Taketoba added. It has helped me immensely in the world of business. He also had a suit made up for me when I retired, and sent flowers when my mother-in-law died. He's that kind of guy. As you'd perhaps expect, though, not all tributes have been as glowing, with writers forever finding new reasons to attack him. The number of salaried wrestlers is fixed, writes Sankei's Nobuya Okumura, meaning that by staying on the chart for November, Hakuho deprives someone from Division 2 of a place in Division 1, and a Division 3 man of a Division 2 salary. If he decided he was going in July, why not submit his papers earlier? Many would counter, though, that sumo chiefs are to blame. They'd known he was retiring for weeks and even asked him to stay on. They did receive his papers in time, but let procedure override common sense when deciding that as the papers couldn't be stamped until Thursday, and the rankings meeting was on Wednesday, he had to stay on the chart. That's not the only questionable call those men have made of late. Although many professional athletes across the globe are tested for COVID twice a week, once every two months is apparently enough for sumo wrestlers. Pre-November testing has been cut from two rounds to one, with that round taking place 17 days before fighting starts and 1,000 kilometers away from the venue. Even 21 months into this pandemic, testing still seems to have a stigma attached. Sumo chiefs have also announced that the total ban on wrestler use of social media, in effect since November 2019, will continue indefinitely. Speaking after a Kokugikan seminar on social media use, with a section on drugs added on after Takagenji revealed he purchased his supply on Twitter, Press Chief Shibatayama implied he couldn't trust wrestlers to use social media responsibly, even though retired wrestlers turned coaches are regularly tweeting and posting on behalf of the association. Some coaches, like the ex Kotoshogiku, are even writing lengthy posts in a private capacity without which we'd never have known that Sadogatake Stable had a seminar on dental care, gum shields, and sleeping habits. While the ills of social media are well known, and wrestlers might well benefit from less time on it, Sumo needs to explain why its coaches can use it, but the wrestlers who train and dine with them can't. In other news, the association continues to demand $5 million of compensation from ex-consultant Yoshihiko Kobayashi in court, testifying this week that he took bribes from a building repairs company to secure the biggest building repairs contract possible on the Kokugikam, and charged sumo chiefs for numerous jobs that didn't need doing. And Takatoriki continues to play tape secretly recorded by the ex Kasuga Nishiki, in which the late wrestler names several current coaches among those with whom he fixed bouts, 
only to be told by the investigative committee that it conveniently didn't have time to probe them all. Nishiki is also repeatedly warned by his coach to accept his dismissal politely for the sake of keeping Sumo together, and records himself griping to his lawyer about having to bow down on hands and knees to his entire stable, even though others in the room had clearly fixed lots of bouts. Kasugano Stable is reportedly aware of these videos and suitably irate. Riki insists he cares not and that truth will out. And no newspaper will dare touch this topic. <laughs>